Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I am so excited because today we've got another massive sample haul. It's not as massive as the last one, but it's still pretty massive. We've got 11 fragrances and I'm very excited to share my thoughts. There's some pretty hyped up fragrances in this bunch, so stay tuned and fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> right, I'm gonna spoil alert this sample haul and let you know that um, the Amouage Guidance 46 is a part of this haul and I literally can't smell anything else. Like I haven't even opened it yet and it's completely taken over the sample bag, the box, all the strips, like, yeah. Gotta love that guidance. Before we jump into today's video, I would love for you guys to share with me your scent of the day down in the comments below. And I'll share a fun little layering combo that I put together. I got the um, Coco and Shea release from Bath and Body Works. I got the oil and the body cream. It's like honey, honey infused Coco and Shea. So I used those straight out of the shower and then I doused myself with Jardin de Mispa by Une Nuit de Nomad. Um, and the combo was lovely. I went to the grocery store shortly after and I could tell that people were like loving my scent trail. You know when you can tell that someone like wants to ask you what you're wearing, but they're like maybe a little shy. Anyways, let's dive in you guys. If this is your first time watching one of my sample hauls, you'll know that these are second impressions. So when I received this box of samples from Surrender to Chance, love you Surrender to Chance if you're watching, when I received this box, I immediately opened it because I have no self-control and I sprayed tester strips uh, with each fragrance and I did a uh, first impressions like in my head. So I did look at the notes um, when I did the first impressions. I have not looked at them since. I've only looked at them one time and I just sprayed a tester strip. I didn't do any skin wear and I rated um, on a scale of one to 10 what my first impression was. So what I do with these videos is I basically do a second impression on the tester strip and then I give you my um, impression after the second time. The reason why I do that is because I use the same tester strips. Generally, there's still yeah a little bit left on the strip so I can kind of get, it seems like a more accurate read on the fragrance. Um, but I'm telling you guys, like all I can smell is Guidance 46. Okay, we're just gonna go with it. So the very first fragrance that we're gonna talk about is by a house that I have been talking so much SHIT about um, because they changed ownership like four years ago and in my opinion, went downhill. Um, in the majority's opinion, they are like the best thing since sliced bread because everyone loves Fleur. I mean, I just haven't been that impressed, you guys, to be honest. Like I've been like severely disappointed compared to their older fragrances. But then came Vanilla Skin. And on first impression, I gave this a 9.5. So let's talk about it. Yeah, I actually wore this last night while I was watching Lost. I'm going through a Lost phase. I'm watching all the, the show from beginning to end. I'm on season five. Anyways, this is a really woody vanilla. It's got this like vanilla extract, but kind of like floral, like almost bourbon. This is like vanilla 28 on steroids. I actually think you guys, I'm gonna make a bold statement. I actually think this is better than vanilla 28. It's different. It doesn't have that like brown sugar thing that vanilla 28 is. So I don't want you guys to think that they're like exactly the same, but this seems a little bit more nuanced to me. And I'm like, huh, Fleur, you finally did it. You finally impressed me since 2019. It might've been later than that. I can't remember when they were bought out, but mm, this is really good, you guys. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it thoroughly when I wore it last night. This, I think, is the only one that I've actually tested on skin. Um, you know, the longevity is nothing to sneeze at. I actually sprayed this. I'm just remembering this. I sprayed a strip of this in Sephora, like the day that it came out. And I just stuffed the strip into like the front pocket of my purse where I put like my phone and my keys. And then like a week later, I was at my dad's house and I was going to leave and I grabbed my keys and my sunglasses out of my um, purse and I put my sunglasses on and I was like walking out the door and I was like, 
said to my stepmother, I was like, do you smell cigar smoke? Like, what is that? Is someone smoking a pipe? Like one of those like old, old school tobacco pipes. I was like, what is that? And she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Couldn't figure it out. Like drove home, forgot about it. And then the, like a couple days later, I was back at her house. Same thing. I like took out my sunglasses, put them on. And I'm like, it's my sunglasses. And I smelled my sunglasses. And I'm like, why do my, why do my sunglasses smell like pipe smoke? This is so, it's like a sweet, very sweet pipe smoke smell. And then I reached into my purse later on to grab something else. I think I was grabbing like a piece of gum or something and I pulled out the strip and I was like, oh my God, it's vanilla skin. So on paper, it's nuclear. It lasts for days and days and days and weeks apparently. Um, on skin, I would say you're gonna get like moderate longevity. Um, it's definitely not gonna go away super fast, but yeah, this is just absolutely beautiful, you guys. Like I'm gonna keep it at a 9.5 for my second impression. Okay, next up we have one from my new favorite house. This is by Sniff and this is called Rose Era. And on first impression, I gave this an eight and let's give it another sniff. Mm, this is so pretty. This is a, like a very soapy, it's a very launder-esque, clean, somewhat soapy, but in like a dish soap kind of way, but not in a bad way. Rose strawberry maybe. Um, there's some greenness in here too. You guys, this is so good. Like what is Sniff doing? Like why aren't people just freaking out about how good their fragrances are? I just, I don't understand. There's something in here that smells, is it apple? There might be some apple in here. So this is a rose fragrance, but it also has a lot of like juicy fruitiness to it as well. And it also has this very smooth, clean, laundry, almost dryer sheet smell, but it's like subtle, it's not too much. And it just smells cheerful. It smells like, yeah, it just, it literally smells like you're in a good mood. It's like a rosy version of um, Kylie's Eat an Apple, but way better. I didn't really care for that one personally. Yeah, this is really, really, really pretty. So I gave it an eight. On initial first impression, I'll give it an 8.5 for my second impression. Next, we have one by Gucci. This is the new uh, Flora Gorgeous Orchid, and this is going to be like an ozonic um, kind of floral summertime vanilla. So not a gourmand vanilla at all, um, but again, like kind of a solar sort of beachy vanilla. Beachy, whoa. <laughs> yeah, okay. So interesting. I didn't get this the first time, but I'm getting almost like a banana runt scent. It's, it's actually, to my nose now, smelling way more floral than vanilla than it was the first time. The vanilla is very, very subdued, actually. If you liked uh, Beach Walk, I think that you would like this. It's To me, in my mind, it's like if Beach Walk and Goddess had a baby, only because the vanilla in here is kind of similar to the vanilla in Goddess. But there is like a weird sour, like banana thing coming in. What did I give this? I gave this an eight the first time. I might give this a 7.5 or even a seven now. Um, but I definitely need to wear this on skin as well. Okay, speaking of goddess, next we have the most polarizing fragrance of the year. This is uh, Burberry Goddess Intense. I sprayed this on the day of release in Sephora and I loved it. I just sprayed it on a strip. It was the last thing I sprayed. I had smelled like a million other things. And then I just went about my business. And then when I sprayed it the other day, I gave it a six. Um, I may have been influenced by some of you guys that gave your opinions. <laughs> I was like, wait, everyone hates it. Why do I love it? And I started doubting myself. Um, to, people are correct when they say the opening is screechy, it smells, uh, like those sugary candies, not Pez. What were those candies? Oh man. It's so strong. This is so much what it smells like. I will figure out what the name of the candy is and put it here. I was huge into these candies in the eighties. Definitely like rotted my teeth for sure. I, I attribute all of my cavities as a child to these candies. 
but that's what it smells like on the opening. It's definitely screechy. You're getting that lavender vanilla DNA from Goddess, but it's just more intense. Like this perfume was named so appropriately. It is Burberry Goddess, but it's very intense. The notes are all amplified. It's like the notes are like on steroids and the lavender's in my opinion, way more forthcoming in this than it was in the original. But I like it. I like it. But I also love the smell of lavender. I know a lot of people aren't super into it. Uh, but this is one that I definitely want to try on my skin. I'm not sure why I gave it a six. Because now I'm like, it kind of smells like an eight. But again, definitely going to wear test this for sure. Okay, next we have a new release by Brown Girl Jane. This is called Carnival. And I can't remember the notes in here at all. I gave this one a 7.5. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is like, this is a very photorealistic mango. This is like a juicy, like this is not a synthetic mango at all. At all, like it's the most realistic mango I think I've smelled in a fragrance ever. It's a little green. Mm, this is such a beautiful, juicy, there's other fruits in here. Uh, there might be guava, there might be passion fruit. I'm so curious about the notes. This literally smells like a tropical, like fruity cocktail. Okay, so top notes of mango, agave nectar, and jasmine. Middle notes of amber, ginger, I definitely am getting the ginger, and the musk. Base notes of vanilla, pimento, and sandalwood. And it does have a little bit of a spicy kick to it. Yeah, this is really pretty. It's a little bit, not juvenile, I don't wanna say that, but it's a little, like I feel like I could find this in a body mist, but it feels slightly more elevated than a body mist. I'm on the fence about that comment. Like I feel like It is really good. It smells a little bit youthful, which is fine. Um, again, I always feel this way about like fruity florals. They just feel a little bit too relaxed and like generic for me, even if they're well done. Like I can tell this is well done, but I'm definitely gonna wear test for sure. And like I said, the mango in here is, this is the best mango note I've smelled in a mango fragrance. Usually for me, mango comes across like very synthetic and I hate it in fragrances. But yeah, this smells really good. I am really excited to wear test this. I gave it a 7.5. I feel like that might go up after a wear test. Okay, next we have Grove by the Sea by Arquiste, which I am so excited about, you guys. If you know, you know, Arquiste is my favorite house. I talk about it all the time, blah, blah, blah. You've heard me talk about it. This is stunning. Like Arquiste, Carlos has this incredible ability to literally recapture a time and place in history and resurrect it with scent. Like he is such an artist, such an artist, such a visionary. This, you are literally in an olive grove by the Mediterranean Sea, you're there. That's literally what it smells like. I'm getting maybe a little lavender. I'm definitely getting some thyme, some salty fig, some olives, like briny olives. It's like a little bit of sea air. I'm getting some sort of like, I'm not looking at notes either. I'm like, a, this is a photorealistic experience right now, you guys of like a place, I swear. <laughs> um, there's something green in here. It almost smells like, like a pine tree, almost. Something like kind of like needly, you know? This is just absolutely gorgeous. And this is not normally the scent profile I would go for. I literally just want to wear this just to experience the magic of this art. It's not something I normally would wear. I just want to experience it. It is absolutely stunning. Um, I gave it a nine. I'm definitely going to give it a 9.5 only because it's not my normal scent profile. But other than that, this is magic. Next, we have a body mist from Fleur. This is called Heavy Cream. And I wanted to love this, you guys. I really did uh, because I'm super into the like lemon gourmand thing right now. I gave this a three on first impression because it smells like baby vomit to me. It literally smells like baby puke. 
like mixed with whipped cream. <laughs> it's like, this does not smell good to me. There's nothing in this that I like. It literally smells like sour milk, baby vomit, with maybe some like breadcrumbs on top <laughs> or like some like, Ugh. Okay, next we have Cirque du Soleil. I know I'm super late on this one. I gave this an eight on first impression. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, I wanted to love this more than I do. It is really nice. At the very beginning, it's like the perfect combo of like this salted popcorn with this like caramel, like apple and like a little bit of cotton candy maybe in the background but I wanted the fruit to be more involved. I wanted it to be this juxtaposition between sweet and salty like the whole time. And unfortunately, it kind of just starts to go down this like popcorn route, which is fine. I know a lot of people are gonna love that, but I really wanted the fruitiness to stay. I really did. And I don't know, the, I mean, it smells gorgeous, just the, the popcorn, note by itself is way better than what about pop in my opinion like it's definitely delicious it's just a little bit like bready not bready but like I just want the fruitiness in there you guys like I just thought that I thought it was going to be like a caramel red apple cotton candy popcorn thing like the whole journey like the whole time so I don't know, I'm definitely gonna play with this. I might wait a little bit until the temps cool down a little. Um, I gave it an eight out of 10 and I think that rating will probably stay. I need to kind of let go of my expectation around this and just appreciate it for what it is. Because if I went in without any expectation, I would probably think this is gorgeous. But yeah, let me know in the comments. I bet the dry down, I'm getting some vanilla now in the dry down. I bet that pans out well. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. It's the Cirque du Soleil, beautiful bottle. Yeah, I just thought this was gonna be Narnia and it's not. Okay, next we have a DS and Durga. This is their newest release potentially or one of their newest releases. It's called Let's Dive. And DS and Durga is similar to Arquiste where they really go outside the box to create um, different experiences with their fragrances. So I know a lot of people are like, what the hell is this? Um, if they don't understand like the brand concept and like what the brand is aiming to do, they might think this is the most disgusting thing they've ever smelled in their life. What they were doing with Dive was to recreate the experience of whales communicating with each other under the ocean, um, in the ocean. So one of the things I heard a podcast about this with the creator of DS and Durga, he said that they did some research, they were doing some research about whales and their communication patterns, and they started to be able to, to decode their communication based off of the sounds that they were making. And they found this like very specific sound that they made that when they made it, it meant let's dive. And so they wanted to create a fragrance based on that. So obviously you guys, this is a fragrance about whales. Obviously this is loaded with ambergris and I don't know the quality of ambergris that they used um, because they don't know what access they have to what materials and like real ambergris is pretty expensive from what I know. Um, but I will just tell you up front, like if you don't like ambergris, do not even try to smell this fragrance because you will vomit. This literally smells like you're swimming with whales. It's got like the very like salty ocean smell. Like you can smell salty ocean water and then you can smell the ambergris. And there's something floral in here too, like very minimally. And I don't know what that is. There's a fly buzzing around my office. I hope you guys can't hear him. He's super annoying. I feel like there's always a fly in here while I'm filming. Yeah, this is going to, if you like marine fragrances, like a true marine, and if you love ambergris, you're gonna love this. Is this gonna be challenging to wear? Absolutely. freaking lutely is this a masterpiece for like, did they accomplish the mission they set out to accomplish? Hell yeah, they did 100%. So I gave it a nine out of 10. I am going to wear test it because you never know how it's going to, you know, perform on skin. All right, next we have second to last fragrance. We have the newest release from Soradora. 
This is my first experience of the house. This is called Elop. And this, I gave an eight. Um, I don't know why I didn't get that much of this one. I don't know why. But let's give it a little snifferoo. I heard someone say that this was like an apricot version of Angel Share, which I don't really agree. Oh, it's really pretty though. It's like a apricot tea fragrance, but there's something heavy in there in the base. Almond, definitely getting the almond. There's some rosemary, some sesame, some vanilla. Yeah, I'm really excited to wear test this. It's interesting because it's like almost aromatic, but it also feels kind of thick and syrupy at the same time. Really interesting. Yeah, so I gave this an eight out of 10. I feel like after wear testing it, it's gonna be higher for sure. Okay, and I saved this one for last because it's literally a bomb of fragrance. This is Amouage Guidance 46, the X-Tray. I don't have the, I do have the original somewhere. I just don't know where it is, not the bottle. I have a sample, um, so I can't do a side by side, but I did kind of just notice right off the bat when I smelled this, like what the key differences are. And I'm not talking about from a notes perspective, more so from like a vibe and a feeling perspective. I just put way too much on that stripper and it's on my finger. The entire planet is gonna smell like Guidance 46 for the next three days. Like the whole city is gonna smell like it. Sorry, Austin. Ugh, wow. How do they make these so beastly? Um, I know there's more notes in here, I think, than the original. This just smells, it smells more polite. Like it's still really freaking loud, but it smells, it's more polite. It smells a little bit like rounder. It smells a little like the edges have been kind of like rounded out, if that makes any sense. Um, I feel like it might be a tad nuttier. Okay, so remember how a bunch of people were saying that the original kind of smelled like something that we can't talk about on the internet without getting banned? Like it smelled like lady bits. Um, which I didn't, I didn't pick up on that until I heard someone say it and I was like, oh, it kind of does. This doesn't. And I wonder like what, okay, let's just look it up. Oh, there's rose water and almond in here. I'm not sure if that, if those notes were in the original. Yeah, this just smells smoother. It smells more polite. I kind of like this one more, I think. It just, yeah. Mm, it smells more feminine. It's definitely different. Like if you put these side by side, you'd be like, oh yeah, like the, it's obviously the still guidance DNA, you know, obviously. But this just, this smells a little bit more complex, which is like hard to imagine that it could. <sighs> I was gonna scroll down to the Fragrantica comments, but have you guys noticed like the people that comment on Fragrantica, I'm like, is this your first month smelling perfumes? Like some of the stuff they say, I'm like, you literally have like, I'm not trying to be negative, but I'm just like, you have no business leaving fragrance reviews on Fragrantica. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's kind of mean, I guess, but that's just my opinion because I, if I, if I bought things just off of what people said on Fragrantica, let me put it this way. All of my fragrant, all of my favorite fragrances are absolutely, like they, they get trashed in the Fragrantica comments. So like, I just don't, yeah, the rose is more prominent here. Okay, yes, someone just said that. I'm like, yes, that is definitely what I'm getting. It's more floral. It's less fruity, it's more floral. Slightly toned down, a little bit more uh, smooth. Yeah, 100%. So I gave this an 8.5 on my initial rating. I do need to wear test this, which apparently now I am, because <laughs> I got it on me. Um, <laughs> so I'm sure that rating will go up. But yeah, this is my latest sample haul, you guys. And I am going to take a little break on, I'm not taking a break on sample hauls, but I my next focus is on actually two different houses. 
So my next sample hauls will be house specific. I have two packages coming. One is from the brand Sphinx, which I've been wanting to smell forever. And I ordered it weeks ago and there was like a shipping issue. Customer service was amazing about it. I was getting a little triggered and they like totally just made it right for me, which was great. And then the other one I just ordered last night and it's the Letta Discovery set because I haven't smelled anything from Letta yet. I know there's only three, but I'm super excited. So those will be my next kind of like sample videos to come out. And then of course, I've got a new release video coming for you in a couple of days as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's content. Please leave a comment and let me know your thoughts and opinions on the fragrances I shared. I now would be a good time to interject that even if you share a differing opinion, please share it because I am all about inclusivity of all opinions. Everyone's opinion matters. So please share your opinions below. Let me know if there's anything you're super excited about that I did not mention that's new. And yeah, I hope you guys have the most beautiful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.